Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Joining in ahead of the two day MK conference uh, which begins tomorrow are our market masters Krishna Kumar Karwa, the MD of the company and of course we have Sindhu Samir as well, co-head institutional equity sales of MK Global Financial Services. Uh, Good morning, uh, uh, Sindhu, of course, uh, it's good to see you after a long time. I think uh, <laughs> when I first joined CNBC TV 18, you were the first guest, so, you know, that I used to talk to. So good to have you in our studio. So that's a bit of a deal for, for me. me. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll come back to you in a bit. Uh, but before that, uh, Krishna, uh, you know, your thoughts on this, uh, the, the last, uh, you know, few weeks uh, and the, the way the market has reacted. Good time for you to have the, this conference as well. But uh, you reckon we have passed the worst of the, the correction in the broader market? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, three, four months ago, there was too much of a euphoria as far as the small cap, mid cap was concerned. And a whole host of factors got into play, including regulatory challenges, etc. Uh, and you saw a deep correction, which was uh, possibly waiting to happen. And uh, I think what has happened in the last few uh, weeks is that if you see the corporate performance across the board, that has been... Uh, uh, fairly positive. I would say more than 60-70% of the companies have come up as per expectations or better than expectations. And uh, so post the correction in the, the breadth of the market has improved substantially uh, in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, that's the uh, and uh, as far as large caps are concerned they have had uh, so the nifty has continued to do well basis five six seven large cap companies doing very well but uh, for Nifty being all-time high, there was hardly any euphoria as far as the mass average investors were concerned. And you could also possibly see that uh, your mid-cap, small-cap indices are still a distance away from their peaks, uh, which uh, uh, they had reached in uh, maybe Jan uh, below before that. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it's, a, it's a recovery. I mean, post the deep cut which had happened in the small-cap, mid-cap, there is a decent amount of recovery. But I still feel that... Uh, there will be a decent amount of volatility which will still be there in the small cap, mid cap segment because going forward, uh, liquidity is going to be a major challenge, both global as well as domestic uh, liquidity. And you also see that uh, as far as the domestic flows into domestic mutual funds, etc., are concerned, they are stable at 7 8,000 crores, but uh, until unless you have a bigger amount of flows, maybe the small cap, mid caps is the segment where invest or domestic houses would be re reasonably cautious. Okay, uh, well, good morning to both of you. I just want to talk a little bit about this uh, confluence itself. You have, you know, 100 companies and over 450 investors that are participating in this confluence and a lot of interesting companies, right? Madison Sumi, HDFC, ICSA, Pru Life, etc. Um, uh, Krishna, good morning. Just to... Uh, uh, take you know take that point forward that you made about the MF flows. This time we've seen in the month of July flows have fallen to eight and a half thousand crores compared to an average of around ten thousand plus that we had in April, May, etc. Uh, would you be concerned about that, or do you think that uh, this is just an aberration, just a blip, and that flows will resume on the upside? No, you have to be careful. I think uh, SIPs which are around seven eight thousand crores, that's a very decent amount of flow, which which possibly will continue to be there. But I think the discretionary flow or the, the large ticket investors, they are the one uh, who, who try to time the market. And possibly that is where we are seeing a lot of reduction in the flows. And maybe let's see when they become negative, if they become. And so the domestic flows are giving a lot of stability to the markets. Uh, the SIP, which I think the domestic mutual fund industry in the last few years, the kind of education that they have done. and. I think it's clearly, clearly reflective of the retail participation uh, in the market. Mm. So I'm not so uh, concerned in terms of whether the flow will become negative. I don't think so. It can get muted or rather it may remain stable at these levels. That could be a possible uh, uh, scenario which we are playing out. And uh, there is a X amount of uh, paper which is always there from the government or from private uh, corporates, etc., which is expected to come into the market in the next uh, one year or so. So you require a decent amount of flows to continue to flow. Sindhu, uh, morning. In fact, I want to bring you in into this conversation at this point. Uh, the, the thing is, SI SIP flows are good and they're sticky, uh, but they alone probably won't cut it because that's still 900,000 crores at max coming into the market every month. 
on the institutional side what is the mood like out there because we we while the you know secondary market flows have been dwindling look at what happened with hdfc um, the ipo there the money is just swelling so what's the institutional sentiment so institutional sentiment right at the start of 2018 was fairly reasonably cautious but everybody seems to be have surprised by the rise in nifty which has taken place all said and done coming back to the retail flows now even if 6000 7800 uh, 8000 crores might be marginally dipping but look at the absolute value of it we were just discussing that three years four years back we used to think that we'll see a day when you will get an absolute inflow of a billion dollars so we are getting that at absolute level this is still astounding numbers and they i mean i remember when i started my career my father said open a ppf account these days whenever my daughter will be starting her career i'll be giving her a very different uh, advice it will be a sip account so the cult of equity and the virtuous returns which have been made over last 10 15 years there is a qualitative there is there is a change in the mindset which has taken place and look at the per capita income which india is showing in last 3 or 4 years the increase in it that will see to it that we don't worry much about <coughs> much about crude oil prices also we we have some surplus capital for financialization to take place so there is a there is a slow grinding wheels of economy which are percolating down to individual disposable income which are making these changes happen so yes there will be some kind of a hiccup but if in the long arc of things it really does not matter that much okay by the way <coughs> jubilant food work is at new all time high but uh, and i discussed that because you know that is one of your top picks uh, uh, sindhu from the mk group uh, uh, again you know consumption has done well but uh, this this argument about uh, you know the same set of stocks making new highs and making a bit of a mockery of valuation uh, you know, so how, how how to value these stocks now uh, you know at, at current valuation for example <laughs> okay first things first so i mean let's contrast fmcg with pharma Mm. all said and done nobody is fearing that the business model of fmcg companies can have a regulatory challenge they can just plunge the earnings in pharma in last one and a half years plunged by 25 30% mm. so there is no fear of that kind of a hit coming on the fmcg space mm. also in last two quarters this sector was supposed to be compounding at 16 or 15% forward now in last two quarters of earnings this sector is getting forward as per consensus numbers will be compounding somewhere around say for around 17 to 18% and the leaders will be compounding at 18 or 19% add to that i don't know why it is not being discussed that the roes in the business are notching up in last one or two years they have gone up by 3 to 4% and i'm talking of the leadership in fmcg so that is also happening what we are debating is a potential fear of derating which can take place but if somebody is ready to take a five year view this sector still makes sense that is our view is that yes valuation can be debated it is a subjective matter but in terms of the business model it is getting superior the slow grinding wheels again of of consumption in india will see to it that there is not a very big scary moment in this sector and space Yeah, in fact, hardly any scary moments, right? I mean, we've seen such a big growth there. The other uh, space I wanted to talk to you about was this chemical. I wanted to talk to you about was this chemicals, this packaging films business, because SRF is one of your topics. It's been your topics for a while. Uh, once again, we've seen very good numbers come in from uh, this company. Uh, do you think there's more to go for this sector? I think K K sir is better place. <laughs> he's a he's a he's a resident expert on chemical space. He'll tackle it better. See, I think the specialty chemical space. Uh, there are two. Th- I mean, uh, the sector has got uh, re-rated, uh, and then last 18 months, you can say possibly the sector has been kind of consolidating. But the tailwinds, as far as the, from the China angle itself, I think a uh, lot of uh, capacities over there are closing down for various reasons. So. uh that's one big tailwind that has and if you look at individual companies uh, in the sector itself i think they are reaching that size and scale where they are able to now become market leaders in their chosen segments and also global consumers or global customers they would also want to de-risk themselves and they are using india as uh, in the as a manufacturing base 
so they want an alternative so you see uh, many of these companies are able to uh, source have contract manufacturing opportunities etc so all in all the specialty chemical space there is a lot of opportunity and a lot of scope i think whether you go for uh, fluorine based chemistry or benzene based chemistry there in every individual company has kind of defined itself in the chemistry that it is specializing in and that's where the opportunity is if you look at every company in the space uh, and look at it the, the domestic companies the biggest guy in town probably only 12000 13000 crore market cap so still there's a lot of scope for many of these companies to uh, grow maybe in the last 18 months they have seen some consolidation but we are very uh, gungo and positive on this space from a medium term perspective okay gentlemen very interestingly i think in the <clears throat> topics part of the portfolio i find both icici bank and hdfc bank now my question is this if we are looking at the next 12 months incrementally which stock might do better or which set of stocks private sector banks versus the underdogs which is the corporate facing banks so uh, we cannot talk about individual uh, stocks but uh, just to add uh, to take this question forward i think uh, as far as retail banks the retail private corporate uh, retail uh, private banks they have done exceedingly well in the last uh, so many years the challenge was in the corporate banks uh, in terms of their performance in terms of their npas etc but at the end of the day there is always a light at the end of the tunnel and possibly we are closer to the end than the beginning so my sense is that uh, uh, corporate banks or co they should possibly outperform in the next you ask the question specifically for the next 12 months so from a 12 to 18 month perspective i perspective i think uh, these are the banks uh, which are more corporate facing they should be able to uh, deliver uh, stellar returns is my take uh, broadly but also you need to understand uh, appreciate the fact now that uh, each and every bank in the country is talking of we want to go retail we want to go retail whereas the retail leader himself is increasing his exposure to the corporate sector mm -hmm. if you look at the numbers so that's where the guys who are already there in that business possibly should do very well okay, okay. Uh, <coughs> krishna uh, you know you'll have a lot of nbfcs in your uh, conference uh, uh, we have hdfc amc also listing you know a lot of life insurance come this this sector all of a sudden has opened up uh, you are selective here uh, you're saying what kind of uh, nbfcs do you think will still do well in this environment is it <clears throat> i think uh, if you see i'll put it the other way around mm -hmm. where are the headwinds today the headwinds are possibly in the housing finance companies okay. they are the ones uh, uh, which are in a rising interest rate environment they are possibly going to be uh, struggling for and there's huge amount of competition in that sector and so that's one sec uh, one segment of the business uh, in the nbfc sector which possibly uh, may struggle for maybe a year or so and so that's where the challenge is but otherwise if you look at the rural india facing nbfcs they seem to be in a sweet spot in terms of because the growth seems to be in uh, uh, excellent in the rural area rural part of the country and uh, nbfcs which are focused on rural india they seem to be uh, doing uh, Uh, very well so that's one segment where we continue to be uh, positive on and the other segment which is on the consumer financing or the unsecured loans etc so you have the leaders over there who are con who continue to do very well so that's one segment which we believe which will continue to do well you are mentioned about the amcs and uh, yes that's one segment uh, which uh, part of our uh, thought process and uh, so amcs will it's a good long term story whether uh, to invest in amcs or wealth management firms but can can i just ask you this because we had this conversation yesterday with mm -hmm. one of the bankers involved in in one of the recent issues mm -hmm. the question is whether you can keep valuing amcs on aum basis and give multiples of 12 times 13 <coughs> times so that that's fair or not this gentleman had a view that start looking at price to earnings even for amcs so just because numbers are ballooning the way they are i want to understand how you value these companies I don't think so. We can straight jacket as a percentage of AUM or as a PE. I think somewhere in between is the way you should go. To. Because ultimately, this is one business which is out of intellectual capital. You create your returns. So your return ratios are infinite. Kind of infinite return ratio over there. So uh, to just value and uh, don't look at it from a one year, two year perspective. You should look at it 
that what is the penetration of financial assets in retail India and what can be in the next three to five years. And if you will factor that into play, then I'm sure you will, I mean, if you're, all of you are not investors, then you should be invested. Okay. Well, uh, Sindhu, uh, you know, you have some very interesting companies at the confluence. One of them is Madison Sumi. Now, I don't want to talk specifics, but uh, what's your own view on how to approach these global market leaders in their sectors? Because, you know, we've seen a bit of a slowdown as far as earnings are concerned, but the managements are very optimistic about the growth going forward. So, how do you tackle it at a time like this? So, I'm, I'm not naming any company but uh, just look at these companies just two or three years back there was a crisis they have come out very effectively if you go back 10 or 12 years back they were just uh, they were just nothing but a microcosm of the OEMs in India now suddenly the world is their oyster so these business models have proven that these are not India plays these are not only pan India plays these are pan Asia plays perhaps pan world plays so there is a business resilience in their model. They have scaled their models both on the top and bottom. And the, the businesses increasingly are morphing into superior businesses. So, I mean, I remember 2002 and 3, people used to deride these companies that there's hardly any fresh free cash flow coming out from these companies. And lo and behold, when I look at the balance sheet of such, some of the companies, especially the leaders, sometimes I think that these are quasi FMCG plays, yeah. some of them, yeah. some of them. And when I say some, they're hardly three, four yeah. in that space. So I think in a, in a quarter or so, that too in the, in the, in the rising in, uh, <coughs> commodity space of uh, problems, they can show some, some stress. But in the long term, I mean, these are places where one has to be there. Just to add, yeah. I mean, uh, you have to look at these companies from their track record. I think uh, no analyst will be able to understand or read these companies. You just have to see how they have delivered over a five-year, ten-year time frame, mm. what they have promised and versus that how their delivery has been. And you continue to believe that if the management is promising X and their track record is so strong, then you should give them the benefit of doubt that they will deliver going forward also till they don't deliver. Mm. So I think that's the way to analyze these companies rather than micro understanding. And if you look at all the acquisitions that many of these, these are global companies, these are only, they're based out of India, but these are multinationals. Mm. 